In this video, we're going to build rag chains with Redis, Grok Cloud, and Llama 3. The rag chains are going to be high performance, privacy focused, scalable, and customizable. I'm going to give you three practical examples from basic to advanced. And to give you an idea of what Llama 3 can do, let me show you the output of a contextualized rag chain. So this chain will not only do retrieval from Redis, it will also fetch additional data from Redis that is used for making recommendations. And the quality of this Llama 3 based rag is amazing. It's very fast and fluent in the interaction. So here's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to start out by formulating a simple rag chain using Grok Cloud, Redis, and Llama 3. Then I'm going to extend this to a hybrid rag chain, a chain that allows for filtering. And finally, I'm going to formulate the contextual rag chain, the chain that allows us to fetch additional data from Redis in order to make recommendations to the customer. I'm going to use a database hosted on redis.com. You can get started for free. And I already made a video on how to set up a Redis instance in the cloud. I'll put a link to that video below this one. I'll also be using Grok Cloud. And to get started with Grok, you simply sign up, log in, and fetch an API key. And of course, Llama 3 is an open source model. But if you're using Grok Cloud, you should read the terms of service, especially section 5. And this section details how the data is being used. With that in mind, let's get started. All right, so here in the Colab notebook, I'm installing the usual libraries, python.env to fetch the API keys, Langchain, Grok, Sensense transformers for the embeddings, Redis, and Hugging Face datasets. I've uploaded my .env file with the API keys, and then I have a JSON file with customer data. And I'm going to use the customer data for contextualizing the rag chain in the last example. For storing the vector data, I'm going to use Redis on redis.com. And here I have my Redis URL, my host, my password, and my port that allows me to connect to the Redis database. And in order to connect with Redis Pi, you simply pass the host, port, and password. And then we can ping the database and flush it to make sure it's empty. So as you can see, I already downloaded the Hugging Face embeddings. And now I'm just going to connect to Grok Cloud. And we do this with Langchain. I'm importing Chat Grok from Langchain Grok. And then I'm connecting to Grok and I'm using Llama 370B. So the data set I'll be using in this video is the fashion product data set that's available on Hugging Face. I'll put a link to the data set below the video, but I'm going to use Load Data Set from the data sets library to load the data set in the notebook. And then I'm going to extract the product display names, and then use those names for creating vector embeddings. So this is what the products data frame looks like. I'm going to use the last column here for the embeddings, and I'm going to use the rest of the data as metadata in example two. So let me just extract the texts into a list so that we can feed them to Redis along with the vector embeddings. And here we have the product names that will form the basis for the retrieval. So let's now create a simple rack. I'm going to import string output parser from Langchain core output parsers. I'm going to import runnable pass through, and I'm going to import Redis from vector stores. And then I'll use the from text method that's built into the Langchain Redis connector to send the product display names with the vector embeddings into vector storage. And note that I'm using the full Redis URL here to connect to Redis. Once the data is loaded, we can just check the index name. And now we can define the retriever. So I'm going to set up the retriever so that we fetch 10 documents. And then let's try to search for genes. And here we see that we get a nice selection of pants and genes. So now we are ready to set up the rag chain. I'm going to import chat prompt template from Langchain prompts, and then I'm going to formulate a prompt that says, answer the question based only on the following context. And then we inject the context and the question. And as for the chain itself, I'm going to use pipeline composition, so Langchain expression language, to compose the chain. And in the first line here, I'm extracting the question from the input data using the lambda function, and then passing the output of the lambda function to the retriever. So the context is a composition of two elements. And of course, we also need to pass the question itself to the LLM. So that's a separate second component. So all of this is a runnable. Then we compose this runnable with a prompt 
with the LLM and with the string output parser to get the full chain. So that's it. And now we can execute the chain. So let's feed the LLM the prompt. I'm looking for a nice pair of jeans. And as you can see, this chain is lightning fast. It gave us the response within a second. And the answer is pretty much what you would expect from GPT-4 Cloud 3 Opus. So this was a basic chain. Now let's build on this and do something a bit more complicated. So I'm not going to do a hybrid rack or a filtered rack. So we're going to filter the vector similarity search. I'm just going to flush the database so it's empty. And in this example, I'm also going to load metadata. And the metadata allows us to filter the vector similarity search. And this is obviously going to be needed in lots of use cases, especially in e-commerce. So now we just pass in the metadata, which is a list of dictionaries, as an extra field when we load the data to Redis. And the cool thing about this is that it allows us to define and use filters. And filters are also built into Langchain. So I can import Redis filter from Vector Stores Redis. And then I can define a filter, for instance, a text filter that allows me to filter the season, because season is one of the fields in the metadata. So I'm going to import Redis filter, and then I'm going to define the season as summer. And then I can just pass in the filter as a search keyword argument in the retriever. So let's try to search for genes again. And in this case, you see that we only get genes for the summer season. And this is very useful for practical applications. And as for the chain, this is the same as before. Now we're just passing in a retriever that is filtered. And to test it, I'm going to ask the LLM to give us some info on the season. And if I run this, you can see that I only get suggestions that are summer related. So this was a filtered rack, a hybrid rack. In many cases, you also want to inject other customer related information into the prompt templates. This could be if you're trying to personalize the customer experience. So the customers.json file I talked about in the beginning contains customer data. So this is a synthetic data set that is built around the products that we loaded into Redis. And here we have a bunch of simulated customers. Those customers have a name, an email, some orders, and a recommended incentive. And incentive recommendations is something that you can create with machine learning. And all of this customer data can also be loaded into Redis so that it's made available for the LLM when it needs to communicate with the customer. So here I'm iterating through the customer data frame. I'm constructing a dictionary of customer info containing extracted customer information. I'm converting that customer info to a JSON string, and then I'm storing the JSON string in a Redis hash under the key customer data. And this allows us to fetch the additional customer data and feed it to the chain. So I'm just going to load the customer data to Redis. This is going to take a little while. And then I've created a function called fetch customer data that allows me to fetch the data from Redis with an email. And if I run this function with an email, Jenna Miller, you can see that I get the customer data. So now we are ready to formulate the advanced rack chain. I'm going to set the retriever to retrieve 10 documents. And in the main template, I'm injecting the context, the customer data, and the question now, three things. And I'm asking the LLM to use the recommended incentive to convert the customer, and also to use the name to guess the gender without mentioning this. And then I'm asking for at least five recommendations. And as for the chain, I now have an additional field in the dictionary now called customer data where I'm fetching the email, and then I'm sending the email to the function fetch customer data. And that's going to be injected into the template. And to call this chain, I'm now passing in a question and an email. Let's try to run this. I tried out some different variations. Here, let's go for looking for some nice genes, as we did before. And here we get a selection of genes. And you see that Lama 3 is actually using the recommended incentive to try to convert the customer. And the quality of this output is just as good as what I'm getting with GPT-4 Cloud 3 Opus. But you can easily play around with this and switch out the LMs to see what results you get. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, I suggest you check out one of the other videos on using Langchain with Redis. Thanks for watching.